is this Japanese golf launch monitor app. For iPhone, the best kept secret in golf. <laughs> Could this be the best kept secret in terms of iPhone applications in the world of golf. A kind gentleman under the name of Don commented on a recent video saying, Simon, have you heard of the Golf Boy app? And if you haven't, would you be able to review it, please? Well Don, I hadn't heard of it. And thank you ever so much for making me aware of such app because this is gonna be one exciting video. I have spent the entire afternoon putting this app through the test. We're talking chip shots, we're talking wedge shots, we're talking mid irons, long irons, and then finally the driver, which sprung some interesting surprises, and I can't wait to show you the numbers that we saw at the end of this video. But this ain't the first launch monitor phone app that I've tested. We tested the Shot Vision about a year and a half ago, put it through the paces, and the overall synopsis is, is good in terms of gapping, but it isn't a club fitting experience. Let's be honest, if Flightscope, Trackman, Foresight could make an app on your phone so that everyone worldwide could download it for $20, $25 a month, they would do that as they would make an absolute fortune. So it's not gonna be the club fitting experience, but is this new one that we've discovered, the Japanese version, with a different method of camera angle, go be that much more accurate and reliable. I enjoyed the shot vision, and to be honest, I haven't tested it in a while, so I'll be interested to see these head to head. How good are they? Because the golf boy that I've been testing this afternoon, well, I'm impressed. And obviously the normal apology goes out to you Android users and I have the answer why a lot of these apps don't feature on Android and it's because the phones and cameras are so different. All of you have so many different Android phones whether it's Samsung or Google or whatever it is. So making a launch monitor app specifically for the camera, the frame rate, making the calculations is so difficult when you have 20, 30, 40 different phones. Whereas the iPhone is quite simple. You have the last five year models and then you can calibrate it to that so unfortunately this isn't for Android and it's only for iPhone. One of my big issues with the Shot Vision app was the setup. It was essentially behind your back left hill which made sense. It was basically the biggest viewing camera angle when I spoke to the developers about it that they could get the ball and club in as many frames as possible but the big downside of this was it's behind your left hill and I know that you could pair it or connect it to a watch or something else so that you could then see the data in front of you. That's what you want. You want to hit a ball on the range or on the golf course and you want to see the data immediately. Well, this new angle where you're placing the phone itself is directly in front of you, meaning that as soon as you hit the shot, you can then directly get immediate feedback on club head speed, ball speed, launch angle, direction. But there's a big drawback before we even start. I had to go and buy another tripod. Yes, another tripod. My collection is growing and that's because you need a narrow stand tripod to actually get the function. You'll look at my two tripods here, one very stable base so it doesn't blow over in the wind and one very petite one for those travel vloggers that you see on your Instagram page. First quick test, the 100 yard of the litmus test. Everyone hits the ball 100 yards. So we set up outside the flag, just under 100 yards, wind slightly into and again I'm not expecting this thing to estimate calculate all the outside environments what I do want to know is is it relatively accurate club head speed are we seeing relatively accurate ball speed and then also can it work out that initial direction can it work out that swing path are we seeing on the iPhone screen exactly what we're seeing out on the golf course so therefore we're going short shots long shots and everything in between so you guys know is this thing a load of rubbish or is it actually telling the truth? I want to coordinate the shots I hit on the green with what the app is actually saying. And through the 100 yard test, it was a tick in the box. We were talking 97 yards. We were talking around the 100 yard mark with the first two. And I actually hit the last one slightly heavy, which it calculated. It said it came up short, but unfortunately, because it doesn't know the outside environments and we were into wind, I essentially hit a flyer. So it went past the other two because the first two were caught up with the spin in the wind. But in terms of calculating club head speed, ball speed, and actual direction from 100 yards, 
that's pretty good. And before I move on into the mid iron section of this review, I do want to point out that the actual app itself is very user friendly. It took me 10, 12 minutes to set up. And the big bonus that I like about this, opposed to the shot vision, is that it's just in front of you. You get the ball, you set it up, you don't have to look behind you or wait for the vibration to see if you're in the right place. The other big feature I love on the display system is it shows you basically a frame by frame swing of where your head is traveling at impact, which I think is a massive bonus for a lot of beginners starting this game that think they're hitting it into out or think they're hitting it out to in when they're just not and when it's just there in your face on the screen well you can't disagree with it can you now the mid iron shots from about 160 plus yards is when we start to see some disagreements between the app itself and the actual ball flight and how far it went the pathway that i was hitting into with my eight iron which let's be honest was a bit confident was straight into the teeth of it so where i was seeing 130 140 yards where the yard is the app itself was telling me 180 170 consistently but that's the important thing that i saw with the app itself through pretty much all of these tests each shot in its respective element was the shortest one if it was the shortest number on the app and the one that went the furthest was also the furthest ball that i hit in real life meaning that even if the yardages were out slightly or the overall distance of all the balls collectively was different each individual ball was short enough or long enough depending on how hard I hit it. And every time I looked at the club head speed and the ball speed, it matched up to the distance, which made a lot of sense, because let's be honest, it's the only way I can calculate any distance whatsoever. But as I progress into one of my favorite elements, opposed to the driving element, the chipping, this really impressed me. And actually, I could see myself using, in terms of gaining a yardage, and you imagine a 30, 50, 70 yard chip shot in terms of launch angle and spin rate they're going to be quite generic and i also show you there's a few elements in this app especially when it comes to the driving side of it which you'll see later is that you can actually adjust it a bit more to your environment we're all in different climates we're all in different weathers we're all hitting different range balls and the app actually lets you strengthen or weaken the distance ratio so with a bit of fine tuning and maybe more than an afternoon's worth of play you could probably fine tune this app to be quite accurate to your circumstances but i'll let you guys watch me hit three wedge shots from just under 50 yards and the whole reason of this i want you guys to be a be able to see the ball flight a see the distance and b me using the app and as i hit each one i caught them relatively cleanly okay the last one potentially was a slightly bit heavy and again that's why we see the anomaly but in terms of overall strike club head speed and distance i was very impressed with the distance that it was spurting out it was 50 yards within two yards or below which i think for most amateur golfers whether it's 100 yards 150 yards 200 yards if we give it that five percent leniency even with laser measuring devices i still feel that's relatively accurate enough for the majority of us to help improve our game and if some of you guys can rein in your 70 90 110 yard wedge shots with a device like this I actually can see that being useful for your golf game. Enough messing about though. We need to start ramping it up. We're going long irons. I'm going to hit a six iron here and it's downwind or virtually no wind. So the odds are it's going to work in the favor of the app now. And again, I was pleasantly surprised. The one that I leaked out right was the shortest shot out of the three shots. The one that I nutted straight in the middle with a bit of a fade. And again, the line direction, the alignment with this app is a bit tricky. It's not one that I'd really use in terms of club face and swing path. And that's not really what it's designed for but again i would say it accurately measured how far my ball went even though it hit the right hand side of the green and nudged a tiny bit left it was within 10 yards of a 220 yard golf shot and just like the shot vision app we are starting to see better and better variations of trying to get affordable club and ball data we're not quite there yet and i imagine we're still four five years off getting anywhere near close to a three four five hundred pound decent reliable spin launch side spin you name it device but we're getting there and seeing these different ones on the market the secret ones the ones that no one's even known about even though it's been out for four years as it says on the app so i only got one review for a guy that didn't even use the paid version it's nice to see some healthy competition out there and if there's more affordable devices like this in the future be sure that i want to try them so it's driver time let the big dog eat we're using a 915 tightless and again the balls that i've been using old tightless balls nothing special and again i'm not seeing this 
thing reading dimples. I'm not seeing this thing calculating launch and spin to be perfect. So you have to take the numbers within reason. As I progressively hit the ball harder and harder, the app was reading my clubhead speed as being faster and faster. And here's the exciting factor that I liked about this device with the driver. Is it accurately gonna measure my driver distance? No. Is it gonna work out my ball speed? No. Even though I'd like to think I was getting 190 ball speed out on the golf course with only four swings, that just wasn't the case. However, if it's accurately able to measure, on average, a rise for my clubhead speed and also a slower club head speed if you wanted to use this device to get faster know what makes you swing it faster use it to get an average of what you swung it last week to this week to next week i started seeing a difference i feel like testing out on the golf course like today with my wedges my irons drivers mid irons long irons my club head speed was pretty much in the areas. I haven't tested my club speed for a long time, but I kind of know what 70 miles an hour feels like. I know what my six iron is at 95 to 100 miles an hour. I know my driver on the course hits about 120 miles an hour. And if I go for it, it gets up into the 125s with my standard driver. And this device wasn't too far out. Ball speed, somewhat questionable, and I wouldn't actually use that. But if you're on the driving range and you're looking to gain some distance potentially over the summer and then going into the winter, I do feel frame by frame, this device was able to calculate a slower swing speed for me and then a faster one. Meaning that if you use this device at 100 miles an hour, in two months is reading at 115, I honestly think you would have increased clubhead speed and that's just not a glitch that is wanting to show you. Pros and cons for this app on the iPhone. Con, you Android users can't actually use it. Pros, I actually thought the data was pretty reliable considering this is a phone and you're using it out on a golf course with a tripod. Con, I don't know how easy this is going to be able to be used on a driving range. Similar to the shot vision, if you were to use this on a wooden base and you're getting vibrations as you hit the mat, because this device has to be very close to your feet and strike point. Therefore, because I was out on the golf course, I saw great numbers at the driving range on a mat, forgetting that a mat's on a ledge anyway, trying to get it that close, I feel like that could be a bit clunky. Pro, the actual interface and the frame by frame shot dispersion that you saw there whilst hitting the ball I think was 10 out of 10 the fact is data's in front of you the numbers in front of you and you get to actually see your swing at impact in front of you as well I thought that was one of the biggest advantages of this device con I think it embellishes your yardages when you first start using this unless you're a very high altitude and it's a very hot summer's day I don't think I was hitting the numbers I was so it's going to take some tinkering but again pro this device lets you do that you can tinker range ball it can tinker course ball it can tinker with how far the yards is, slow down the ball speed, slow out the roll, slow out the bounding. And again, I think with a bit of playing and testing, you could probably get this quite close to your circumstances. Pro is a two month free trial. So just go and download it. Con, you do need to go and buy that funny tripod stand or maybe manufacture something out of your garage, whatever it might be. Mine one was 22 pounds off Amazon. But overall, I think for 22 pounds, the pros that I've weighed up, the cons that I've weighed out in this video, as well as the data that I've seen, I don't think it's the worst investment you potentially had in your golf game, or just have a bit of fun with it on the golf course. If you like this video, leave it a like, subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys there.